What's up, everybody? This is El Roche, and I'm coming back at y'all again, this time with part two of setting up an altar for Papa Legba, as well as connecting with other spirits. Go ahead and click on part one if you haven't seen that already. I highly advise before connecting with any spirits, I'll say this multiple times throughout the video, please connect with your ancestors. Please establish a relationship with your people. Click on my video, too, about ancestral altars. I most speak about Lua and Orisha in the African pantheon because that's what I feel like more so resonates with me and my lineage but as for you whatever resonates with you if we're in Kemet and you are talking to Sun God Ra if you are Wiccan or Pagan or Druid or Celtic I advise you to go with what you feel as well back to my people who are specifically of the American descendants of slavery or um, a lot of my people across the diaspora whose history has been locked away from us for so long you fear the unknown and that is on purpose do not be afraid of yourself we fear things that we need to learn so more so be open to learning have an open mind and an open heart to learning about things that are a little different than what you're used to enjoy even with Papa Legba when I was at his altar and I refer to this in my video of Papa Leg, but when I was at his altar one day and I wanted to get into tarot and I wanted to get into getting people in touch with spirit, you know, in some type of way with their loved ones in some type of way. My, 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 um, niece friend came over as soon as I said that. And I was at the altar of Papa Leg, I was sitting there right there at the front of my door, had the candles lit, had chicken going, you know, we chilling, listening to jazz, love playing some jazz music. And she came and she didn't want to be interrupted, but she kind of wanted a reading. And y'all, I don't know if she remember, but it was uh, Verde de la Guadalupe. It was the Virgin Mary that was her, that energy was around her. And she, she, I believe, and I, I said it, mother, I'll be telling about business, but this is like something that real time happened after I asked Papa Legba, how can I help people? What can I do? What can I say? And I connected this girl because I gave her a reading and told her about the full moon and what day it was. And she recognized that that was the day of Virgin Mary too, around that time, that full moon. That was a time that I, I was so thankful after I gave her that reading and just connect to her in such a way because I just want to continue to do that. I want people to connect with their ancestors. Somebody put that in the comment section of my um, Papa Lego video that they had a vision that I would somehow help people connect to ancestors. And these are videos that are overdue and I do apologize. I do, but I, I be hesitant because I'm not an initiative. I'm not, um, I don't have titles, you know, I, I study so much, but I go by what spirit has given to me and I've been thankful for it. See, and it's up to you to decipher if you feel, if you are fully connecting or in tune with certain spirits, if you feel like they are calling to you, that's all I got to say as somebody who, who is from here, like I, I try to get more in touch with my hoodoo side, get in touch with root work and, and herbs and the spirits and every single thing that's around us, loving on mother nature a little more. You know, got my, my baby, my Zulu plant right here, just blossoming, you know, understanding energies in that way. But when I am getting approached by, if I feel like I'm getting like the okay by certain spirits, when I'm getting like, hello, like, hey girl, not by certain spirits that I, that are in tune with something that I feel like I'm in there. I mean, I wouldn't, I'm going to deny it for <laughs> the first time I've been to this wonderful spirit shop and I, I got to make sure to always, I'm going to shout them out in this video because I'm going I'm to do it another time. I got some Van Van oil from them. This is our little red one shop. This is a shout out to them. This is a black owned business, metaphysical shop in Third Ward. I love Third Ward. Papa Legby energy is, it's three. It's in Third Ward. I Everything that I do is 
is really there and, they, and that's just by chance my one of my doctors my lady doctor is <laughs> in third ward okay there's that energy of emancipation park you know get into the history of that since i talked about galveston that's in third ward to really be a grounds that you would just want to be at you know what i'm saying at least not just get the energy there's a hbcu there you know but that shop they i've been the first time i went there i don't know i got a ring from that sister Beautiful, beautiful spirits. And I'm telling y'all, good energy, good vibes. And and she, I remember she burnt sandalwood. That's when I remember to use it a lot. And she said, before I got my reading, she spoke to other sister that worked at the shop. She said, you, I, you smell? I thought that, I was like, y'all smell, it's me? <laughs> no, they sensed led by a spirit and she said i remember she said obata i remember she said he came through too because at that point in time this is when i was first educating myself on different lua i want to also add that during that reading and that time speaking with her my grandmother came through and if you are familiar with my spiritual awakening video my grandmother and my father were major characters okay <laughs> with my spiritual awakening so for her to step through the building and have a message for me and to get on me i wanted to show that out too in the entrance of their shop you can see there is an altar for papa legba as well as marie laveau so that also i took a visual of that and it made me comfortable with starting my altar so that's one of my first times i was like okay this is a this is an energy that I'm familiar with. This is somebody who came to me and he's one of the reasons, Papa Legba and Marie Laveau are one of the reasons I even went to, New, uh, had interest a lot, you know what I'm saying, in New Orleans and learning about indulging myself in the history around that time. This is before I was all the way connected, you know, with that. I, I asked him, I said, I'm gonna find a way. This, this was my three year anniversary of going to New Orleans. And I needed to give back to New Orleans. It was one of the best times. I wanna move there. It is spirit. I was able to connect, and that's what I ask. Connect me with spirit, connect me with ancestors, you know? And I get to be in touch and I feel like I'm, I'm forever grateful to him. Papa Lake Bob. I'm forever grateful to Marie Laveau. And even the weekend of um, when I connect the dots because I was able to go to a voodoo fest and I was able to go to something like an experience. And I'm going to add, I'm going to speak on how good spirit and timing and ancestors is. During the experience, like a tour that I went on before the voodoo fest, he reminded us that there is a voodoo fest in Congo Square, but I forgot all about it. I had to drop off my best friend at the airport, which is headed towards Houston, because she had to make it back to um, Carolina. Well, something in me said, just go back. Just go back and get some beignets, girl, and go walk by the park one more time. I parked my car in a way so I can just walk past Louis Armstrong Park, Congo Square, and that's when I met Kalinda Laveau walking up and they were setting up and I had a quick word with her. And I said, well, I guess I'm supposed to be here, huh? Blessings. And Blessings. her name is Kalinda Laveau. She is a, a voodoo queen in New Orleans. And it was so good to hear her speak about things that we all need to do. And that is to get... They still never forget. Sometimes you may have an inkling you may have a thought to do something and you don't really know quite where it's coming from, but it may be something that you know just what to do. You know just what to do to fix the situation or heal yourself. Even if you have no knowledge of voodoo, if it is in your bloodline, you have it. It's in your bloodline. So you will be informed by those ancestors and your ancestors, they go back even further than the ones that we hold beloved. As black people in America, we must heal. We are not okay. Before you go over there. We still have pain. We're surviving. We are amazing. But we're not okay. We move on past the pain. We carry on even though it hurts. 
And now it's time. That is to get in tune with ancestors, get in touch with our bloodline, our roots, just finding more about yourself in particular so you can be comfortable practicing whatever energies you want to. If I'm be real with y'all, I go with what comes to me and what shows itself to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Ah, it just came to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to make sure to say that in my ancestor video because I just learned how to say that in, in Creole when I went to that voodoo fest and got to do, oh, I got to connect. I got to connect. Love, yeah, yeah, love, yeah, yeah. That's ancestors. I gotta make sure to remember that. And this is my Papa Levy video. Look at this mess. I'm gonna keep it right here. So it just, I don't know why I just thought about that. I just had a, I just sat on like, hey, how do you say that again? I remember how to say love, yeah, yeah. I think so, love, yeah, yeah. Tell me if I'm saying that right, but it was so wonderful to connect at that doggone festival. That made, mm, that made my trip. Mwah. It was on 11, um, 1, November the 1st. And that is, I didn't even know that that was the voodoo, no, voodoo, no, Lord. Voodoo New Year, was it not? When is 11, 1? I'm gonna title it. I'm gonna title it. I got to be in New Orleans in Congo Square with a wonderful voodoo queen, Le Le Levo. I got to be cleansed, y'all. And I got to dance the drums. And I, I even went to a drum cycle, y'all. Y'all seen my Elek, Elek My Own Shroom uh, video. <laughs> drums that was more it was like the it was like the latin flavor i loved it this was i was in congo square and i didn't know what year it was i got lost in the year y'all i got to get lost y'all know in my other videos when i when i'm disgruntled and i'm talking about what year is it because i be feeling like this 1935 alabama we're gonna get to that in the next video but this recent time when I got to get back to New Orleans, when I get to touch, even though Congo Square was closed because of the hurricane, they still had that voodoo fest. I felt like, what year is this? Because I was back, I was back, I was back in time. I was back in a time when we were resonating hard with them drums and it was serious to dance, y'all. I got to dance. I'm supposed to be gone, y'all. We dancing though, they going off. Check them drummers out. They giving whole classes, but we, we, we gigging. They, they get all the music I want to this whole weekend. Get all the music I want to this whole weekend. And a blessing. We don't have to be in the board, though. Shout out to, to, to the folks that were there that were um, part of their drum class, y'all bless them, bless them kids. But I had to come up in there, y'all. Like I, look, I didn't care no more. I just wanted to dance. I just wanted to move. I just wanted instructions. And some of the dances still are dances that we do too. And I'm like, you just, we here, y'all. We are so connected, past connected. So I thank Papa Label for that. I really do. I really do. His energy has 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 blessed me in different ways. The way I go to Papa is the same way I go to ancestors. Just keep that in mind. He is a caring, he is a nurturing person, so please don't trip. This is me talking about my startup. I'm not finna just say, do this, do that, do that. I'm gonna keep referring y'all to my ancestral video because you can somewhat treat this spirit, this energy as that. Like, you know, you get some grace with it if you, falling up short sometimes i'll lay out three pennies you know it's on a monday of course um i just have a good day that day try to have a just have a good day overall you know i always try to fry chicken because i love fried chicken anyway <laughs>
I just made a dish and I incorporated chicken in it. Y'all help me with that, my Creole people. What is this dish? I probably will find out the name by now, but I'm gonna put it in here anyway because this is me connected with myself. I cook it, my mama cook it. She taught me how to cook it. Shrimp, okra, sausage, chicken in a, in a tomato-based situation over rice. What is that dish particularly called? We call it goulash. Me and my mama, but what's the proper name so I can know? He is somewhat, you know, they say trickster. I feel like things happen and there are lessons to be learned. Hold on. Because my dog starts shifting. When I first tried to set up his altar, it was like, it was it was terrible. My dog, <laughs> I had, it was on a Monday. I was cooking red beans and rice. I'm like, this, I'm gonna set it up. I got it set up. I'm gonna do this. Um, he didn't want me to do that that Monday. I don't think y'all. My dog got attacked by dogs, by multiple dogs. If that isn't his animal as a dog, when you hear them dogs barking and you see three dogs, if you see a spotted dog and you see a white dog, <laughs> red dog, black dog, I don't care what dog, dogs, he'll have a dog with him. And some dogs attacked my dog to the point that we had to rush up. I had, like y'all, I thought I lost my Coco. Coco came to me at a time, the same year I lost my daddy. He was the reason I was able to get Coco, y'all. This her baby done been through her team. I talked about Coco for a minute, y'all. She had to get, she had to heal. He wanted me to wait. He wanted me to wait. See, I did it the following Monday. I had to go to Louisiana shortly after my dog got attacked. We had went to um, visit my grandma. Rest in, rest in heaven, queen. Rest in power. Beautiful queen, beautiful queen. But we went to um, visit my grandma and I had my little bandaged up dog with her, with her cone on and everything, y'all. And I was kind of down, you know, cause this is after me trying to start this, this altar for him. This is at a time too, it was something going on, babe. It was something hard. It was something that I felt like I was low. I would say that, but I was at a place too, where it's like, I'm doing something about me getting better. And visiting my grandma, they went to a yard sale. My mama had asked for my last $5 I had, last $5 in cash. That's why I said I was living in abundance. I gave it to her and she had went to a, they call it rummage sale. Her and grandma had went to a garage sale. They had got a red drum set for exactly $5. And it was a red drum set. All I think about was I pop a leg, pop a leg. Thank you, thank you. Here I am. Okay, I, I mama asked me for whatever cash I had. I said, like, here, Pete. Hey, there you go. And we were able to get my um, baby a little drum set for him. Upon leaving my people house, I was leaving my cousin house. I looked down and I saw a little cutout of a five dollar bill, y'all. A little piece of a five dollar bill. I looked around and it looked like somebody ran over with a, with the a lawnmower, but the pieces of a $5 bill was just in their yard. I giggled so hard picking up every piece of them five, taped that bad boy together, and I went to a convenience store and you know bought something for a dollar and got my little change. Yeah, I got my $5 back. That's it. So that's how that works, Papa. Once I, and also he wanted me to wait because that following full moon was a full moon that, um, the following full moon was that Monday. Cause that happens sometimes. It'd be full moons on Mondays. And that's when we really get it going. So it was, he wanted me to wait. He wanted me to just, just hold on for a second. Like, and I got you in the meantime, while you wait. But when you come through, I want you to come through at this time and I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Cause dogs attack my dog, y'all. And I was like, this man want me to give up my dog, y'all. <laughs> oh Lord, y'all, not my dog. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, he is like American Horror Story, which is not Papa Leg, but that's Bell Sandy. That is somebody else. That is a gay. That is that is who. That is the the, the people of the gay are the the 
the part of the Getty that is over the cemeteries. He is over life and death. See, Papa Legba is the, the gatekeeper. He's the messenger. He's the one that opens up to the other side. He got the key. But Balance D, he's the one that is there on the other side waiting for you, baby. <laughs> he's the one snorting that cloak on American Horror Story. Okay. <laughs> Which he may be somebody who um, Mama Brigitte is his is his woman, and there are still forces that some people might need to call on, you know, for their specific reasons, for their purposes. But his colors are not particularly the same as Papa Legba, as a shoe, as the Legba, you know, his things that he like i have a cross I, I put a cross on my hand you know because i think of the crossroads but i also refer a cross too for papa legba but that's at the the cross sign is more so for at the the cemetery there the, those symbols signifying that you know so people have to really be mindful of who they are calling on but i'm gonna say too you go with the flow you go with who comes to you and you go with who is resonating with you um i feel like that's all with my experience with setting up the altar you know it's sunday now so even even still i want to get this video out and have it going by monday anyway so that's my way to of being like Thank you, you know, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, I feel like we are at a point where we need to educate ourselves more. I'm speaking to you black folks. I'm speaking to a lot of you. My uh, American descendants of slavery, you know, believe what you want to, have your different belief systems, but even still, I, f I have roots in Louisiana. I have roots going all the way to Alabama, throughout the Gulf, from the water, from the ports. I know the islands. I just love the islands, period. You just feel, and when you know what you know, I know I have indigenous roots. I know the lands. I'm a part of these lands, period. You know? Um, I just know that on both sides, but I feel like whatever I'm doing, is respectful whatever i'm doing is beneficial to me i feel like we've been blessed i will say that and i and i thank these energies there's nothing wrong with having something beyond you when you recognize that when they say and, and we're gonna close out with this because y'all really need to recognize how powerful you are as an individual god lives within you for all my god fearing ones, my church going ones. So y'all need to recognize when they say that God lives within you, that you are a God yourself. We speaking about these gods and these Lua. I can put up a diaphragm and tell you with different parts and different chakras that these different individuals resonate with. And you recognize that they are within you. They are an energy within you, whatever your walk of life is. And when you, when you have that perspective, you feel more comfortable talking to them. Eshu is over the bladder. That's on the diaphragm. I, my experience with that is, is getting a, a bladder situation, getting my attention there. And I needed to balance out. I needed to ground myself. Red is for grounding. Once I start doing that, once I start grounding myself with my ancestors, once I started cleansing myself of things that are no longer beneficial for me, it opens up to spirit. It opens up to different spirits. You encounter different people in your physical life because everything is a reflection of you as well. Not just Godly within you, but you are the creator of your universe. Different people that you encounter, remember spirit speaks to them. They have different energies over them. You might get that spirit from another individual who has a message for you. Just be mindful of people, but also be aware of some people who are got other stuff attached to them too. Keep yourself grounded, keep yourself protected, but don't be too afraid. Cause if you move in fear, if you move throughout this process with connecting to your own ancestors, if you move in fear, talking to your ancestors, speaking the spirit, 
speaking with different entities, you're going to call upon something to fear. You're going to call upon something that wants to feed on your fear. So you need to walk within this with confidence, with good intentions. So um, y'all stay tuned for my next video. I hope that this enlightened some of y'all with my experience with Papa Lake, but we're setting up an altar for him. We're going to the crossroad for him and with connecting with different spirits as well. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up with that, okay? Yeah, y'all stay tuned for the next one. I am El Roche and I'll be back at y'all. Bye. So, Mama Dilo means Mami Water, Mother of the Waters. And Elaba is like saying, hey, but not like a regular hey. It's like, hey! That kind of hey, you know? So, that's very common in uh, especially more rural Louisiana. Everybody's loud in rural Louisiana. Yes! Yes! Elaba! And you may be just standing right there, you know? It don't matter. <laughs> so when Mama Dilo comes in, we're calling her. We want the atmosphere to be lively. We want it to be celebratory like a party. We want her to dance, you know? We want her to enjoy herself when she comes in the ceremony, you know? And we're, we're raising frequency so mm -hmm. we're calling on, you know, powers of abundance and prosperity and healing. And so when we feel like we're in a state of lack, or we feel depressed, or we feel sick, it's a very heavy energy. It's very dense. It's hard to get out of. That's why once you fall into depression, it's, 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 it feels impossible at the time to get out of it until you have just a little window. Maybe somebody comes to visit you and you know you, you change scenery for the day and it was just enough to pick you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You must elevate frequency. Yes. And so in these ceremonies, that's what we do. We're elevating frequency. And when we drum, we dance, we sing, it's not just a party. It's not just a good time. This is your ancestral medicine. <laughs>